it's Mrs. Swiss's YouTube video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be updated on all my latest tutorials. Buddy, today we're going to learn about something called value. Now, value in art does not mean how much something costs or how much it's worth. Value in art means the lightness or darkness of something in art, and especially with color, lightness or darkness of colors. And this is going to help you with our shading. So now, before we start drawing, we're going to practice creating a value scale together. I'll give you a little work on that together. You'll also need a pencil and a blending tool. Now, this is a fancy fancy blending tool. You can get them at Michael's or off of Amazon. But if you're a person who does not have a fancy schmancy blending tool available to you, well, then you have one already. It's your finger. You can use your finger to blend those things together. You could also go to the bathroom and get yourself a Q-tip. A Q-tip works wonderfully as a blending tool. Or you can even just use a piece of um, paper towel that you've kind of rolled up because all this is after all is a rolled up piece of paper nothing crazy behind it now when we looked at our slide a value scale went from very light to very dark the lightest one being the brightest or the lightest gray or the brightest white that you can manage to make with your pencil and our last one is going to be our very darkest color so I always start with the one that is the really darkest and the reason why I do that is so that we can get our blending tool whatever we're happening to be using whether that's our q-tip paper towel finger or our fancy blending tool that you see here and we're going to press as hard as we can to make that really super nice and dark now I'm using a regular just plain old yellow number two pencil some people like to shade with mechanical pencils. Sometimes I do like to use mechanical pencils, but I'm just showing you some of the basic tools that most everybody has at home, which is just a regular pencil. Notice I'm not going pointed down. I'm using it on its side. This way my coloring goes a little bit quicker. And here's where that blending tool is gonna come in. I'm gonna use that blending tool, my finger, my piece of paper towel or my q-tip on its side and i'm going to smooth on over all that nice pencil that i just filled in it's going to get rid of most of those kind of scratchy lines and just make it look nice and smooth and blended and i honestly think i could make this a bit darker when you're doing this it's very smart to compare and contrast what you're doing on your paper and how you see it. As we go along, this will make a little more sense. That's my one and only language arts kind of reference that let compare and contrast. Look at what you did and compare it with what you did in the block before. All right, so now I'm gonna take this block and I'm gonna go one step lighter. So I'm just going to not press so hard this time. So my first block, I was pressing really, really hard. I was really killing that pencil there. Now, not pressing so hard, just a little less hard. And you'll notice it is quite a bit lighter. Now, do I think this can go a bit darker? Absolutely, this can. So I'm going to kind of go in an opposite direction and fill it in so it can start getting a bit darker. And you'll notice when I'm doing this, I'm not going in. 50,000 directions. I'm going pretty much in the same direction, trying to cover it over so it looks nice and smooth. And a lot of times when people have kind of rough looking shading, it's because they have been going maybe in a bunch of different directions. You don't get that nice smooth fill. All right, so now I'm using that blending tool to blend it on over and look at what you did before. Is it dark enough? Can it be a little darker? For me, I think so. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bit more pencil. Remember, getting darker means that you're pressing quite a bit harder. And yes, your hands might get a bit dirty. And yes, you are gonna have to sharpen your pencil quite a lot as you do this. 
and that's okay. And we're going to go over to our next block and we're going to do the same thing. This time, once again, not as dark, a little bit lighter. Staying in the same direction. Now I'm going on this kind of diagonal. Can it be a little darker? I think it can. So now I'm going to go in an opposite direction. And you'll notice it gets a little bit darker. As I do that. So I'm comparing and contrasting as I go along here. I go with that blending tool again. Now I'm only asking you to do six different shades of gray here with your pencil. There are college classes on shading that you can spend a whole lot more time with because you can get more than six shades of gray with one pencil. There is an infinite amount of shades of gray. Alrighty, so you see I'm starting to step down and getting lighter, lighter, lighter as I go. This is actually, this box here is the actual last box I'm going to use my pencil in. And I'll show you why as soon as I'm finished with it. Because our last block is our lightest block. And we because we've used that blending tool so much, it's got so much pencil on it already. That most times all you have to do is just take that blending tool and swipe it over that last block to get that very lightest shade of gray. Now look at your boxes. Do you need to lighten? Do you need to darken? If you need to lighten something up, well, you've got that handy eraser tool on the other side. And again, if you do need to darken up, you can go back with your pencil and add a little bit more. I'm looking at these two blocks right here because they're going to start looking very much the same once I blend this one over. So now I'm going to go ahead and maybe darken this one up too, just a touch. Now you might be saying, well, Mrs. Swistak, how does this help me when I'm doing shading? Well, this shows you that you need to have as many shades of gray as you can in an object to make it look three dimensional. So I'm going to look for something around here on my little art desk. I have a little paint container here. I'm going to show you how I'm going to shade up a little sphere to make it look 3D. Oops, things are falling down with using my value scale. So here's my little circle. I'm going to start off using my darkest tone. You notice I'm kind of coloring in a C shape. I'm following along the curve of my sphere. And then I'm just starting to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And I'm doing this all with my pencil first before I even touch my blending tool. Because you want to make sure that you have plenty of pencil down so that that shading tool can really do its job. Shading tools find it hard to blend if you don't have enough of pencil there. So now I'm going to use that shading tool to make that nice and blended and smooth. Give it a little shadow on the ground. And look at that. Just by adding all of those shades of gray, I now have a three-dimensional looking sphere or circle. Alrighty, so that is value scale, ladies and gentlemen. I hope this was helpful, and I hope you enjoyed this short little video on value. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching Mrs. Swiss's YouTube video. Please make sure you like, share, or subscribe to each of my videos so you can keep updated on any of my new tutorials that I put out. Once again, have a great and wonderful day. Adios, Avida Zane, Sayonara, and Arrivederci.